Hi there, and welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy Novels. Today I want to talk about a book I picked up completely on a whim, and that is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, who, incidentally, has rapidly become one of my favorite authors to read after I finally, after many years of it just languishing on my TBR, I finally got around to reading her Winter Night Trilogy, and whoa! Um, that that was that that was really really great stuff, and me picking up this book um, just goes to show that you really can make some good decisions at two o'clock in the morning. Don't let anyone fool you. Um, yeah, so the warm hands of ghosts is the story of Laura Ivan, who's a nurse who did a tour of duty during World War One in Europe. While there she became injured and was discharged, was was sent back home to Halifax, Canada. And shortly after arriving, her entire world gets turned upside down. Pretty much everyone she, she pretty much her entire family died. And um, shortly after she also received word that her brother was killed in action on the front lines um, in Belgium. But then she receives his, um, like a box of his effects, and she notices some inconsistencies with it, and it causes her to go on this desperate quest, returning to the front lines in Belgium to try and find him, find out what happened to him, um, and potentially rescue him. And that's a quest that takes her into a pretty phantasmagoric situation um, and it's one that's more man-made than anything fantastical which I dig, I dig. Um, so in the epigraph Catherine Arden mentions that this is a novel she spent quite a number of years on um, working and trying to get perfect and, and that kind of thing and by the end of it by the time you she you read that fact, it's obvious <laughs> she didn't need to see it. This is just a, a really a, a really complex, complicated novel. It does um, it, it's very much historical fantasy, very heavy on the historical side of things. Um, it's a it's just a deep brooding tale of World War One. And the crazy ripple effects it had on the world, um, society, and individuals at, at the time. Um, it, it was a war literally unlike anything that occurred um, to date in recorded history. And um, it, to say it changed the status quo would be an understatement. Um, it highlights the price that was paid by society as a whole and by the individual. Um, the sacrifices and the, and just the horrors, the tragedies, the both personal and impersonal that that were, were so commonplace. Um, it, people, it, it's almost as if people just became um, numb to it all. Uh, it, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Um, and at the same time, far from being all negative, it, it's a novel that kind of touches on how the um, status quo got broken for the better in terms of the opportunities that, uh, and the new pathways that opened up um, specifically for women uh, was highlighted in this novel. Um, the, 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 the new opportunities, the new pathways to life that opened up for women um, from the sheer necessity of what had to be done in society and um, it, it was fascinating to read there there's she also touches on the way that it the impact that it had just on technology and medicine and the advances that were made as a byproduct or a consequence of the war um, so like there, there's a lot going on here and this and this is all background stuff this is all um, this is just part of the quote unquote world building. They um ju just portraying this the the gravitas of this war in terms of just what it meant 
both the, uh, on both a micro and macro scale. It, it's really well done, Re really, really fascinating. Um, in, in many ways, it, it was one of the big hooks of the novel for me, um, to put it lightly. <laughs> Um, but what about Laura? So Laura, is, she's a, she's a very strong um, female protagonist. Like she goes through some pretty intense stuff, and um, I, I should say like the majority of the cast is because the majority of the cast are women. Um, we do have a few men, but they play mainly side characters, um, supporting roles. And one thing I did note and I did like about how the women are portrayed in this book is that um, their personalities are very different but at the same time they have a lot of similar similarities and it's all about what the war has brought, the, the changes that the war has wrought on their lives. Um, that's the one common thread they have. And um, it's interesting to see how they cope with it in their own way, after their own fashion. Um, it's some very on-brand stuff for them. Because they, they, they're just so well written, so fleshed out that their their reactions and, and their drives and their motivations are as portrayed. Um, never told to us, but portrayed. Just It, it, it just feels very on-brand for them. Um, and I know I keep harping on and, on this kind of stuff, like the characters and, and, and the world building. Um, and so far it sounds mainly historical, um, mainly drama, not necessarily anything fantastical. So this is probably the point at which I should say that yes, there is, there is very much a fantastical element to this novel. Um, it kind of, for me, it kind of thread the line between um, a fairy story and a... Uh, and magical realism, um, in the sense that we have the, the the antagonist is is very much a mythological figure. I wish I were more um, I were more versed in mythology to kind of be able to pinpoint who this who the antagonist is. Um, but for the purposes of this novel, he um, the the skill set that he displays and the way that his skills work. They feel very on brand for a creature from fairy for me, um, and, and just some of the things that are noticed. Yeah, it it, it reads like some like a, a, a fairy for me, um, but th this is not fairy in terms of th this is not the Lord of the Rings fairy. This is definitely more of an eldritch um, horror horror fairy um, if, if this were a fairy from Dresden Files he, he would be someone from the Unseelie court um, you can put it that way um, but he, he's really well written he's um, he makes a great addition to the story in that he kind of just underlines and compounds just, just the horror of the war, um, the travesty, the the depredation, just the just how terrible it all is. He he, for me that 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 was like the primary purpose of his character. He he just kind of underlined, underscored all of that, and um, it's very effectively done. I think. Um, I think I'll stop there. There's a lot more, like, looking at my notes, I've written quite a lot more. Um, but I'm scared of getting into spoilers. Like, I, I, I say it all the time, I, I try very hard to avoid spoilers. But this is a book that I, ju I just loved. Um, it, it's just so well done. I just absolutely loved it. Um, I can probably spend easily another half hour talking about it, if not more. Um, so it's best to cut it short at this point because I don't think anyone ever actually watches this far into my videos anyway. Um, but yeah, recommended for fans of really rich, engaging fantasy novels, magical realism, um, that kind of vibe. I can see this novel appealing to both genre, genre and literary fans. 
Um, definitely, if you're a fan of Catherine Ireland, pick this up because it's when it, when I when I think of how this compares to the Winter Night trilogy, there's a lot of it that's just quintessentially her. Um, what I've now started to think of as like like quintessentially her style. Um, but yeah, an awesome read, and I. I suspect this is one of those novels as I kind of marinate on it more. It's just going to grow and grow in my mind. And I won't be surprised if I see it pop up on quite a few awards this next year. Uh, but yeah, that's my take on The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. Uh, if you've made it this far, I don't think anyone ever makes it this far. But if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching and happy reading.